Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. Jay Klein tonight here and of course head coach Steve Jennings. Coach, kind of a rough weekend. Uh, we're home and home with Bismarck starting off with a 5-2 loss on, on Friday. Um, an even game at times and you guys had some pushback, but it, it, from my perspective, like we talked about Saturday, it felt a little flat uh, on Friday night here at the OD. What did you and Coach Devon uh, take away from Friday night? Yeah, I thought our energy could have been better. I mean, I, I, like, like you said, at times we were good, right? And we, uh, we gave up three goals on, you know, assignments we had talked about all during the week and had, had, you know, gone through and just mental breakdowns hurt us, right? And that's the, that's the difference between pro hockey and junior hockey is kids, Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, but, you know, unfortunately it bit us and it, bit, it hurt, right? So, um, you know, I think we, we had some good push there. We had a couple of nice goal, you know, a real nice goal from Jacob Bossy. Parks Wallace gets us gets us back. We bring it close and you know turn the puck over with an empty net and you know it winds up in the back of our net, right? So so definitely some stuff that we could learn. And I thought I really was excited. I actually thought we had the opportunity to to, to take what was the start of a streak and continue it. And you know now we're back to square one. All right. Then you go back uh, against against Bismarck on Saturday, and of course the second half of the home and home there at the VFW Center. That ends up being a 4-1 loss. Um, they scored early, a uh, minute 37, I think, in uh, into the the first period. You guys seem to settle in a bit, but ice a little bit tilted there in Bismarck, and. Um, I think that the, I felt like the energy level was a little better on Saturday night, but Bismarck was tough, and they are tough to beat in their own building on you know uh, on a regular basis, really. What did you guys think of Saturday's matchup? Yeah, totally different. Um, I think you know when you look at everything, we, we've gone through, watched the video, gone through the analytics there. Like you know, that was if we had played that game Friday night, we would have won the game Friday night, right? I think that that game Saturday, you know, we did everything but score. Uh, we hit the crossbar a couple of times, hit the post a couple of times. You know, we, we definitely had those opportunities. We built momentum off the power play there. I mean, we kept it close. We gave up the two empty net goals. And, you know, this is the time of year where we're going to have to learn to push through some of those things, right? If we don't practice that, if we're not trying to score in those opportunities and we get to later part of the season and we need that, you know, we passing down those opportunities, it's just not something you can do, right? We play every game to try to win. Yep. Right. We don't don't play to try to preserve a score or anything silly like that. We're actually trying to take steps in advance. And, you know, we, like I said, we gave up those those two goals there. But, you know, otherwise, I, I actually felt like and when we went back and watched the video, we controlled the puck mo the majority of that game. And we had we had some opportunities. We just didn't finish our opportunities. Right. And that's just unfortunately, that's hockey. Yeah. Well, and I know you talked about one of the keys uh, going into Saturday to being able to get more shots through and, and on goal. Uh, that was fairly limited, uh, especially through the first two periods. It, um, a little better job of that uh, in the third. But it seemed like Bismarck kind of they were had it in their mind that they were going to jam up the house and, and uh, they had a lot of bodies in front and made it difficult to get shots through and so on. Is there a way that you can kind of combat that, you know, when, when guys are when they're playing kind of a – a jam game like that where they're clogging things up. Yeah, I think I think there are. I think we also had more opportunities than maybe were reported. Yeah, I mean, let, let's just call a spade a spade, right? Okay. So there's 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 some of that, but um, you know, I, I think we you know there are things that we were doing. And we were still getting our opportunities at the net, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like we weren't getting shots. I mean, I I kind of disagree with the assessment that you know it was that Saturday was like Friday. I thought they were two completely different mm -hmm. efforts, mm -hmm. right? And and I think. That's where we we just have to get consistency in our game, and I thought we were starting to build that consistency. We took a hit Friday night. I thought we built back into more more of our normal operations on Saturday, and we need to keep building for that as we go to Austin this weekend. Uh, is there a teaching moment in any of that from this weekend? I mean, it's <laughs> every game, every practice, there are teaching moments for well, sure. Well, there's 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 growth, right? And, right? and we talked about that this morning before we went out and skated. Right? Well, and that's what I was getting yeah, at. Was what, whole, is, what is the message to the yeah, team that, after a weekend like yeah, that? Yeah, the, the message is right. We we sit on the precipice of opportunity here, right? And we let some get away from us, right? And that's the that's the growth. And you know, it would be great if you could be in that magic team that could win. You know pretty much every game and those those seasons and those teams come once in a very rare blue moon mm -hmm. um, and the reality is when you look at our division right we, like everyone is killing everyone week in and week out it's right I mean it it hurt us to get a split but but when you look what happened in the division
everyone beat everyone over the over the yeah. course of the weekend, right? So so it doesn't give us a pass for what happened over the weekend, right? We can, we can't afford to get swept, and that was that's the lesson we talked about here with the guys, right? We, we, so you get a, maybe a little bit lucky, but our luck will run out if we don't change some of the stuff we're doing, right? right. And, so, so that's going to be the growth and the development opportunity for these guys. Well, and oftentimes you create your own luck too, you know. So that uh, that can be can be. Hundred percent. Yep. Yep. Um, well, as you mentioned, everybody split over the weekend, with the exception, of course, of the Wings and, and, and Bismarck. So everybody picked up points on the weekend, except for the Wings. But the good news is, like you said, there's nobody that doubled up or that the top teams in the in the division didn't get a, a you know a big a catapulted and where they're building up more and more of a, of a lead uh, so if things staying pretty close Austin still in first with 43 point, points Minot in second with 41 the wings with 38 points in third North Iowa with 37 and St. Cloud with 33 and Bismarck now at the bottom of the division with 27 points so again very close and as you mentioned building towards Austin um, a team that you had good success um, against at Riverside Arena. They are 2012-1-2 right now, split with St. Cloud over the weekend. And, and again, you were able to pull a couple of wins uh, away from them. Um, the last go around there, the last visit. What do you expect from Austin? I think more of the same. I think they were pretty consistent in the two series we've had with them here and there. So I think they'll they'll come in. They'll play. They'll play. You know, they have some good skill. They have a couple. You know, some guys with some speed, and they certainly have some size, right? Mm -hmm. So I think they'll 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 give us games, right? And there and you know I think Steve's got his kids kind of tuned in pretty well, and so I think we're just going to have to come ready to play our hockey. I think what we've proven, Jay, over over and over is when we just play the right way that we know how to play, we yeah. can play with anyone. Yeah. Right. We can play with them. We get, can beat them. It's all about just what we do and how we get there. Right. And that consistency, that's uh, that the brass ring that everybody's always reaching for, but it's <laughs> tough to tough to come by. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention before we let you go here, Coach, that um, you know over the weekend and throughout last week was advertised and so on and on social media and also on um, various other forms of media that the Wings were helping out with a clothing drive for Superior Colorado and people were able to bring in gently used or new clothing um, to be donated and they would get a $5 ticket. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, after, about warm-ups, right about the end of warm-ups, I looked at how the, all the uh, the amount of bags and everything that were there, and I was really impressed with the amount of clothes that people brought in. And then later on, Aaron sent me a picture um, in between the second and third period, I think, of all of the, the boxes and, and, and uh, bags that were there. And so it was just great to see the Wings community get together and help out uh, the folks of Superior, Colorado, which have been ravaged by uh, wildfires. And, of course, the hometown of Dominic Wasik and of uh, one of the athletic trainers from Northern Mary, who uh, is also from Superior, Colorado. You know, the Wings do a lot of things throughout the year, each and every year, uh, here in our community. Yep. You know, whether it's uh, for fundraisers, whether it's helping out, you know, teaching uh, floor hockey at, at the Boys and Girls Club or at the YMCA or, you know, you name it. The Wings are, are, are proud of their community involvement. And sometimes that community, you know, it's kind of close to home when you've got one of your players and one of the athletic trainers that uh, it's their hometown. So it was really nice for people to, to extend that arm, or, uh, you know, and, and that, that goodwill and charity. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. And, and just uh, the response was great. And just even talking to people who are out there collecting, there were people just coming up, didn't want the reduced ticket or price or anything. They just wanted to help people out, right? Yep. And, that, and that part's that's awesome. And the, the community here, you know, they support the team really well. And, and there's another good opportunity for them to show, you know, what our team need, means to them as a community, but also that, that outreach for us, you know, helping other communities that that may have trouble. And that's one of the things that I think really makes Aberdeen a special place to play, right? Yeah. Like the, the, the people here care about the team and the club and the community, but they care beyond the border of the community, right? Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's great, and that's one of the reasons why I love being affiliated here. That was pretty cool. I know there were some people that weren't able to come to the game and didn't even plan on coming to the game, but they still put clothes together and messaged me over the weekend and said, how can we get these to the, you know, to the wing? So I actually had a bunch of people donating stuff I threw in the back of my pickup that weren't even coming to the game. So I thought that was pretty cool, you know? Yeah, so it was yeah. great. And we got to have folding class with the boys after practice today. We all sorted through and folded them and put them in boxes so we can ship them out there. And 
So it was a little, little good growth opportunity and a good, little team bonding, right? So that, so you know, that's the other part is it's not just the community um, bringing stuff; it's us helping in that effort as well, right? So packaging it up and sorting through it so that so that when they do get out there, they're all pre-labeled and they know that this is a box for little girls or for adult males. And sure, you know, that that's a nice part too. Well, now we know that all the billet families and and families of these players now they all know how to fold clothes now <laughs> they all know how they all know how make their beds and they can fold their clothes right? not just balling it up and throwing it in the corner all right coach well thanks so much for taking some time as usual to, to talk about the weekend and of course the week that's coming up um, appreciate uh, your time and best of luck against the Bruins all right thanks Jake all right folks we'll return with the second portion of Wings Weekly coming up after this we raise the bar on bar food with sandwiches tenders and Okay. There's more where this came from to the greatest of all time. We continue on with our second portion of Wings Weekly, and as usual, a player is joining me. This time, it is Hugo Allais from Amiens, France. Am I saying that right? Yeah, you're right. Next. You're right, Jay. Good, good. <laughs> well, first of all, Obviously, English English not your first language, but you do a great job in you know being able to communicate it and so on. And you spent some time in Canada, but in Quebec, so I would imagine Fran yeah. you know, French is uh, uh, one of the main languages <laughs> there. When did you first start speaking English, and uh, has it been uh, a little while, or kind of new to you? It's kind of new for like from the time I'm here in Aberdeen. It's the first time I'm, I'm speaking like full English because in Quebec, obviously, it was it was Fra up. like kind of a different French, yeah. but still the same language. So, yeah, I said. Since the day I'm here, I started to 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 speak English every day. And, but I, it's a, been a long time. I know I'm coming here, so I will just like watching Netflix series in English, kind sure. of to try to be better every day before coming here. And I think it helps me very very much. That's uh, that's awesome. You guys, yeah. you know, that was um, impresses me. I know when, when we had you know Greg Oro was on too. He had said that he'd only been speaking English for like two years, and I'm going. <laughs> Holy cow, how did you learn a language that quickly? Yeah. But you guys do a great job with it. I got to ask, when you're on the ice, do you do you chirp guys in English or in French? Yeah, sometimes sometimes they come out in English, but sometimes because of like a lot of people on the ice are like they don't understand very much, but I'm just yelling at them. And some <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they got like we speak the same language when we're mad, I think. Yeah. It's just like casual stuff but when I know a guy is like who's French on the other team I somehow like see the lineup before so sometimes I need to chirp him like in, in French I was like whoa 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 and it's like you know yeah. just get in, your, get in their head. I was thinking that about Gustafsson <laughs> and, uh, and the Bismarck goaltender <laughs> about how he could just skate by the crease and say something yeah. in Swedish and have <laughs> go like what? <laughs> That would have been pretty cool. All right. Well, I mentioned, of course, that um, you're from Amiens, France, had played uh, some ju um, up in Canada and Quebec. Yep. But, I mean, worlds apart from Aberdeen, South Dakota. I mean, you're, yeah. what, 75 miles from Paris? Yeah. And, you know, the history of France and the, the architecture and all of those things, it mm. must be so different coming to a place like Aberdeen. It's so different. There's less people. Mm -hmm. I've been in Quebec. There's less people than France. But... Here it's another world. Like yeah. there's less people, not a lot of people, not a lot of things to see. Honestly, you yep. know, from from being from Paris, you know, Paris. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of ar architecture, like yeah. you said. Yeah. And it's so different. We don't have a lot of things to do, but I, I kind of like it here. Like it's Ooh. everyone knows everyone. Mm -hmm. It's kind of familial a little yeah. bit. So. I, Probably I a like little this slower pace in a lot of ways yeah, too. Yeah, no, no traffic. Right. Not, not all that. So it's pretty. It's pretty cool. I like it. Good. It's cozy. Yeah, cozy. <laughs> good. That's a good word for it. And, and cozy's good when it's seven below zero. So <laughs> even the uh, temperatures are taking something yeah. to get used to. How about? I have to ask about foods. I love asking uh, guys, uh, you know, from Europe about the different foods. You know, and like. Because from what I understand, there's a lot of differences when it comes to the sugar content yeah. and all of those kinds of things that, that what we eat here versus what, uh, what you eat at home. Mm -hmm. And of course, France being well known for, you know, for yeah. its cuisine and, and uh, all mm -hmm. of the, the wonderful chefs and, and all those kinds of things. 
what it what okay let's start with this one what would you say is the number one food that you miss because you can't get it here or it can't be made here or is there is there something in particular that's just one of your favorite foods at home that you i would you? say because my dad has a cheese restaurant in france like okay. the specialty of his restaurant is cheese so i think i miss the most is like the cheese fondue you know what a fondue, a fondue? is yeah, yeah. Yep. and do that with cheese with different cheese and you just eat that on cheese and it's so good i'd be like 400 I miss pounds so, i miss that so much i i believe that yeah. i I'm, i love cheese and i i would be like 400 yeah. pounds I love cheese too. what do you think of our what we call processed cheese or the or because i've heard that you guys are like that is not cheese that is trash yeah. you know, <laughs> talk about like the craft singles or some of those cheeses that you do is that something that you'll eat so so yeah yeah because i I love cheese, so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna eat the cheese you <laughs> you put in front of me. So right. I, I like all kind of cheese, but it's, it's, it's so much different. So, so in France, so much different cheese, mm-hmm. like variety of cheese. So you can you can eat every type of cheese, honestly, like strong cheese, yeah. anything. It's for everyone. I think the cheese can be for everyone. Sure. So. I feel like we missed something here. When Jackson Yee is called cheese, <laughs> we, we should, the name should have went here. There you go. Um, what about American food? What is something that you've tried over here that you've never had before that you're like, holy cow, this is good? Is there anything? I remember one time I went I went over at Cade's house mm-hmm. with his billet family and invited us, and we ate the Dorito dish, like a Dorito dish. I don't know what was it but i was good actually very good yeah and it, i think he said it was aberdeen things i'm not sure but uh, it's it's american for me everything is american right so. right <laughs> so but that was that good like, that was good that like was doritos good. with like hamburger yeah, it's like a like, walking taco kind of thing yeah, i'm thinking was like, yeah yeah that was good oh. i remember that well that is great i know yeah. uh, we've had some guys on before that, that <laughs> have just raved about how sweet everything is yeah. um let's see we gotta we gotta move on to to hockey I always ask everybody, when you first got started, how does, how does and your journey is a little different in, in the sense that you're mm-hmm. coming all the way from France to Quebec to Aberdeen, South Dakota, you're all over the place as a young man. How did you start, what were your, your influences, what got you interested in hockey? Um, what brings me at hockey? Yeah, like how did you get started when you were a young, okay. young kid? What made you say, I want to play hockey? Okay. But it's kind of from my dad because yeah. his restaurant is just next to the the rink oh, in okay. France and the team when when they had tournament or games local games they always eat at my dad's restaurant so when I was a little kid I was just running around the restaurant and helping my dad to give them forks and just sure. give the food to the to the players and after that I was like yeah I'm, I watch said, the games by that after after dinner I'm gonna go watch the the games and I just fell fell in love with the game. I tried first time at maybe three wow. and I fell off the ice. I would never put skates on again and after I tried again at six and it worked out for me from this point. So yeah, yeah I stick with it and I, I love it. Excellent, yeah. excellent. How did, how did it go where when you were going to Canada from France, I mean, that's got to be pretty scary. Going to do yeah. another continent, another world, you know, um, and you, you were pretty young at the time, too. Yeah. So I was, that's... I was 15. Yeah. I was just turned 15 when I left to, to Quebec, and I don't regret. I mean, all the good things happened to me from this point, and I met so, so great people, like, here in Quebec, like, I'm great. I'm grateful for for my parents to give me this opportunity because it was expensive at the time. So, sure. yeah, and I left young. Some parents like don't want to let their kids left young the house, you know. So, I'm grateful for that. They give me the opportunity, and I take I take the, I take it, and I work out for me from this point. Very much so. Yeah. Excellent. It always amazes me. It always amazes me the, the junior hockey. What the what opportunities it affords people from all over the world, and it's just so different from yeah. the way I grew up and the way my <laughs> friends grew up you know it's just it's uh, it's very interesting um, what you um, you're committed to Bemidji State mm-hmm. how and, and you've been committed for a, a stretch now how did that go about did you go did you take a visit of the campus and so on or, or was uh, I didn't have the opportunity to 
to visit the campus yet because I committed last last March, March 2021, and it was during the COVID. Sure. And I don't want. I didn't want to take any risk to go to the borders and have some trouble with that. Right. So I'm say I'm just gonna like I I got information from different people about this about the campus and the university and the installation so there are great are great words for for the campus and the university and the people around the city too so it's just it was just a no-brainer to come in there and I'm I'm sure I'm gonna go visit this year I'll, I'll talk I did talk to Steve and 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 BMG the opportunity to, to come have me visit this right. year so it's just, it's just gonna, it's just gonna happen. But I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm gonna like it. And when I get here, all the words about BMG, some got some players, sure, who've, who've got, who've got there. So they all, they all got great words from, for this, this place. So the program, I'm yeah. not, I'm not worried about that. Excellent. Well, good. Yeah, and you shouldn't be. We know <laughs> we've got uh, players that have gone up there, and for that matter, assistant coach winners up. Yep. Up there as well. It's got uh, Aberdeen Connections. Great school. Great school. Mm -hmm. Great hockey school, too. Um, and congratulations on that commitment. Thank it's you. unfortunate, though, that it, because of COVID, you know, you, it really has kind of put a, a damper on the yeah. way guys are able to, mm -hmm. to visit schools and the recruiting process and stuff. Exactly. I know I, I talked to some that uh, were able to take online tours, and I'm like, that's just not the same. You know, you, can't, <laughs> you don't get a feel for it. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Um, you're, again, you're headed to Bemidji. Obviously, hockey is in the is in the mix for you uh, for hopefully long years to come. But do you have anything outside of, of hockey that maybe uh, that you would like to do as a career, just like banking or anything like that that, uh, that interests you? I would say maybe like real estate. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 mom started to do a bit of real estate like maybe a year ago, and it kind of bring me in because I was interested a lot in that part of the job and she started that and I was like yeah I want to like I want to know some things like give me some things yeah. I'm interested in that and from this point I don't know if it's gonna be my job but I'm very interested in that and I think yeah maybe one time maybe one day I will I will go for it and yeah. do it because I like it I like the social th part about that and Everything around that ceiling, you know, that's the values. I, I think, and yeah, the estimating I love. I, I, I'm very interested in that, and that's very, maybe what I want to do. Very cool. All right. Besides that's, hockey, I think that might have been the. There's somebody else that gave us the real estate answer too, and this along oh. those same lines that said yeah. that it would be, you know, because of the different, so much variety, and you're not yeah. doing the same thing and meeting different yeah. people all the time. Exactly. I can absolutely see where that would be something that would be a lot of a lot of fun and uh, would keep you on your toes. I have to ask you about this. It was one of my favorite moments <laughs> on the road this year. You had a shorthanded goal in St. Cloud. <laughs> Go in on the goaltender, and you flip it over uh, up into the upper right-hand corner. And we were in the uh, the, the um, elevator at the hotel, and we were going up to. Uh, and there was a bunch of guys in there, and I heard you say, or someone say, that you when you went to the bench, you said, "I didn't even know I could do this." <laughs> yeah, I actually, did, I actually said that. I was like, "Whoa!" I, it was I, like my first backhand goal, I think. So I can't remember, I think. I <laughs> love that story. Awesome. When, I, when I was in the elevator, I heard that. I, I looked at you and was like, you did not really say that. And you were like, yeah, I did. <laughs> I was just laughing about yeah. that. That's awesome. Yeah. Is there, do you ever have any other moments where you surprise yourself with something like a, a skill like that, where you're like, oh, wow, I haven't really ever done that before, but yeah. it, it worked. <laughs> yeah, for real, this year, I'm, sometimes I just, like, it's so fast on the ice, and I'm, like, it's very faster than... I was used to, yeah. So sometimes it's just kind of like, fast, and I'm like, like instinct, it huh? just happened, and I'm coming to the bench. And I was like, yo, I just did that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I just did that, and I, then I watch on the video. It's like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was so fast, and I just like not blackout, but it's so fast. So I just like, whoa, 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 yeah. take a minute. I just did that. Okay. I love that. Um, like yeah, I said, it's sometimes, almost like in, yeah, I'm on my bed, just, I'm watching video, and it's like, yo, I did. Okay, yeah, nice, nice play, Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh, that's awesome. Nice play, Hugo. Okay, uh, let's see. I had a couple of goofy questions here for you. Would you rather be the richest person in the world or the smartest person in the world? Is rageous 
What, what is richest? Richest? Like the richest most, or yes. richest most or money? smartest? Yep. I think I would take smartest because you can be rich like most of the like you you can you can be smart and after that became rich. You can be rich and good after that answer. became smart. Yep, that's a good answer. I would say that same thing. <laughs> if you're smart, if you're the smartest, you're gonna yeah. find a way to get rich, yeah. right? Yep. Exactly. Excellent. Okay. Another one. And we talked a little about foods and about uh, different flavors and stuff. And would you rather have for a, for one year have to eat or only be able to eat maybe is a better way to put that spicy food not like burn your mouth going crazy spicy mm -hmm. but but spicy or something like oatmeal that's just bland and has very little flavor to it for a whole year every meal has to be either spicy or bland which would you rather have spicy spicy yeah yeah i'm a spicy guy that's... i love spicy okay good good how about would you rather be stronger than 90% of the population or have the ability to fly? I would say fly. Yeah? Yeah, because like there's so much strongest guy on the herd. So I would just say fly to be one, one of kind. Well, and not only that, but you know, you think about what advantages you'd have. Like, yeah. I mean, if you're the strongest, well, what do you really get? You know, what is yeah. other than maybe when it comes to athletics, you yeah. have an advantage. But, but flying, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, pretty much. Whenever you want. Pretty much. All right, free for free. Yeah, Excuse that's true. Too. Flying is expensive. Yeah, <laughs> you can fly home <laughs> to see your parents just like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we've got Austin coming up. Now, this is not the first trip over to Austin this year. You guys have played in Riverside Arena and have had some success there. Yep. Um, after a tough weekend against uh, Bismarck, what, what do you feel like as a team that you need to do to get back to, you know, when you, when you win four straight and then have, a, like I said, a tough weekend against Bismarck, how do you get back in the win column against Austin? I think we need to, to start strong. Like the, the, the two games in Bismarck, we didn't, I think, in North Iowa too, we didn't start very well, but we figured it out. But in Bismarck too, I think we didn't start strong. And like the coach said, be, put the puck behind the D. And you know, I think our starts is very is gonna dictate the game. Yeah. So I think if we start very strong, and I'm sure we will, we will. But we need to be better on the start. I think every period start strong. I think it can help us to 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 win the game at the end of the day. For sure, yeah. certainly can't hurt, but I know that's something coaches have talked about too. Yeah. Is the you know being out mm -hmm. of the out of the blocks yeah. and strong for sure. All right, well Hugo, I, that's really about all I've got for you. But I really appreciate you taking some time to let us get to know you a little bit and the fans to get to know you and and, and hear about uh, you know your your uh, where you're from and uh, you know how you grew up playing hockey and all that kind of stuff. So I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You bet. Thank you. The, the team hits the road this weekend to take on the Austin Bruins. Puck is scheduled to drop at 7 o'clock both Friday and Saturday night at Riverside Arena. Fans can watch the games using their hockey TV login or at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Aberdeen, the official home for all Wings away games. The game's audio is broadcast via Hub City Radio's 94.1 The Rock, or you can listen on the Rock app on your mobile device and take it with you wherever you go. We'll be back at the Odeon on Friday and Saturday, January 28th and 29th to finish out January against the North Iowa Bulls. Corporate night sponsorships are still available in 2022. Call Aaron at 380-5852 to see what's open. Don't forget, Wings Weekly is now a podcast. Find the audio for this season's episodes on Spotify, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. And for all the latest news and information on the Wings, visit AberdeenWings.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now on TikTok as the official Aberdeen Wings. Once again, Hugo Alea, I appreciate you taking some time yeah. on Wings Weekly. Thank you for having us, again, having me again. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, folks, uh, that'll, that'll do it for this week's Wings Weekly. Good luck to the Wings because they take on Austin this week.